So these IV characteristics, they look very similar to what you get in a MOSFET. There's a linear regime, there's a saturation regime. So let me illustrate how this IV characteristics, so how this IV characteristics can come from a device like this. And let me illustrate taking the case at gate voltage equal to zero first. So what I've done over here is I've drawn a 2D cross section of my device. I've drawn a 2D cross section of my device. So as you can see, there are two, two PN junctions, or there are two junctions over here. So that's where this junction in the JFET comes from. So there's a N plus P junction over here, and there's another N plus P junction over here. And if I'm applying zero voltage on the gate, so I'm applying, applying zero voltage on the gate. So this, this junction would be essentially, you know, it would be, it would, it will have some depletion width. And since it's the N plus P junction, the most of the depletion will happen in the P side, which is a lower, which has lower doping. So I'll, I'll, if I draw the depletion region, so it will look something like this, that this, this region is already, is already depleted of, so this is my space charge region or my depletion region, right? and I'm at gate voltage equal to zero. Further, what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll ground my source as well. So I'll apply, a, I'll ground my source. And then I'll apply a small drain voltage. So I'll apply a small drain voltage. And in this case, I'll apply a negative drain voltage of let's say minus 0.2. So over here, let me plot a modulus of this drain voltage. So I'm over here in this, in this curve. So now what will happen? So if you look at uh, this uh, this device, so uh, there's a there's a field in this direction. So you know, let me call this as my y direction, and let me call this as the x direction. So there's a field in the y direction. So there's a field in the y direction. So this electric field will drive these uh, holes which are present, which are present in this uh, in this P region, towards my drain contact, and I'll get a I'll get a positive I'll get a drain current over here, and I, as I as I as I vary my drain voltage from from let's say zero to point two, what I see is that I get a I get a linearly increasing electric field, and I'll get a I'll get a linearly increasing, I'll get a linearly increasing current. So I'll get a linearly increasing current in this in this regime. So, and if I if I think about how the potentials within this uh, within this device are dropping, so I'm applying a point uh, minus point two uh, volt over here. I'm applying a minus point two volt over here, and this will distribute linearly throughout the device. So let me call, you know, this point as point one, this is point two, point three, and this is point four. And if they are equally spaced, so this voltage would be three V by four, this would be, you know, V by two, this would be V by four, and this would be close to zero. So this is how it behaves when I'm applying a small drain voltage. But now what if I, what if I increase my drain voltage? So if I increase my drain voltage, so I'm let's say maybe applying VD equal to minus 0.5 volt. And my, my gate is essentially still at zero. So now let me think about this junction, what's happening at this junction. So if you think about this junction, so this junction over here, this is my, my end contact is essentially fixed at zero and I'm applying a voltage on my drain contact. And I have, I've, I've drawn over here the potential at 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. So at point, point number four, which is very close to my drain, I have a large, I have a large negative voltage. So, you know, in this case, this was a point, this was three fourth of minus 0.2. But in this case, I'm, as I'm increasing my drain voltage in the negative direction, this voltage, this negative voltage at point number four is increasing. So now let me think about, you know, what's happening at this, what's happening at this N plus P junction. So what I'm doing is I'm applying an increasingly negative voltage on the P side, you know, in the channel near very close to my drain, my negative voltage is quite high. 
and my n plus side which is connected to the gate is essentially fixed as zero so this is fixed as zero what i what i'm doing is i'm applying or i'm increasing the negative voltage as i'm increasing my drain voltage i'm increasing the negative voltage at this point so what will do it will do is i'm increasing the reverse voltage across this pn junction so my depletion width which was essentially constant as i moved along the channel or as i moved along this uh, y direction in my device now i'll have a large depletion width over here so i'll have a large depletion width over here and i'll over here i still have you know half of that half of that uh, negative uh, drain voltage so my depletion width over here will, in will increase as well and my depletion width over here will increase slightly but on this side this is very close to the source which is close to zero my depletion width will not change much so if i plot my depletion now it will look something like this so it will look something like this so my depletion width on both this upper and lower uh, pn junction it's increasing as i move towards the drain side because i'm applying a high or i'm experiencing a high negative voltage over here so my depletion width will essentially look like this so all this region is now depleted of depleted of carriers so my holes are only remaining in or my holes are essentially you know my carriers are still located in the middle you know in this middle over here so now when i increase my drain voltage i still see an increase in my drain current i still see an increase in my drain current but that increase would be sublinear because when i'm increasing that i'm also depleting out you know deplete i'm reducing the overall width for the this conduction to happen so if i think about this overall width i'm decreasing that so my iv should will increase but it will increase at a it will increase at a sublinear pace right so now finally what will happen is if i am uh, if i keep on increasing this uh, drain voltage in the negative direction so let's say i'm applying vd equal to minus point or vd equal to let's say you know one volt so this was vd equal to minus 0.5 so a modulus of that is 0 0.5 and now i'm over here so what would happen in this case so what would happen in this case is that this region very close to the drain it will have a, it will experience a very large negative voltage and this this pn junction over here this is reverse biased in a in a it in a way reverse bias with a very high voltage so it will have a large depletion width so i'll have a very large depletion width over here and maybe my depletion width from this upper and lower junction they'll you know essentially merge and all this area would be depleted so all this area is depleted of my carriers and as i'm close to my source side i still am my substrate is still close to the source voltage which was zero so this side is still has that small depletion width but as i move along my channel my depletion width will essentially increase and i'll get into a situation where essentially this this depletion width merge in this situation is called a pinch off so you know as similar to what we see in our mosfet we have pinched off or you know we have we have essentially uh, merged these two depletion widths so from this point onward if i increase my drain voltage if i increase my drain voltage there'll be only or there'll be actually no increase in my drain current because there's no extra path for these uh, for these uh, carriers to flow even though i'm increasing my electric field in this direction so my current will increase because i got a certain current when i you know i was i was I was continuously increasing my drain voltage but beyond this point where these depletion widths merge my currents will no longer increase so i'll get a iv characteristics uh, looking like this where initially i was or actually not going down but staying constant where initially i'm in a linear regime so this is i'm in a linear regime and over here i'm in a saturation regime so in in the next video i'll describe it uh, more mathematically what is the iv relationship but hopefully you got some sense of you know how how you can get an iv looking like this from a device from this junction field effect transistor again so there are two junctions that's why this word junctions comes along and this field in the in this direction is driving my current so that's why it's a junction field effect transistor